What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hello, everybody. My name is Trevor Celescu. And I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Are you looking for a great gift idea for someone on your shopping list? Today, we will be looking at the 1975 Buick Skyhawk by Nostalgic Heroes. Now this model car is out of my own personal collection, however, you can see all of our available model kits at www.monster-hobbies.ca. I will leave a link in the description below. Now let's go down to our bench and see what's in the box. Small car sports coupes were all the rage back in 1975, and Buick decided to enter the market with the 1975 Buick Skyhawk, based of course off the Chevy Monza. The new Skyhawk hatchback yielded decent performance with its 231 cubic inch V6, but the sales were kind of not really that great. This Nostalgic Heroes model kit by Dayusha is actually not really that bad. It includes an electric motor inside which powers the rear wheels. Now as we look on the side of the box we can see details of the model car and you can see that you can build this with an opening hood and an opening tailgate if you are quite ambitious. And here we have a three-quarter view of our Skyhawk and as you can see it does look quite interesting in this red color. It should be quite a fun build. One thing that does seem to be missing based on the drawing on the front of the box and the model kit on the sides is of course the Buick lettering and the black stripe along here as well as the white pinstripes. So if you're really an expert with doing that it will enhance the look of this kit. So now let's take a look at our Nostalgic Heroes model kit in 124th scale by removing the lid. I'm really curious to see what's in here. So of course we're confronted with our instruction sheet and it does have a notation that I did. Bought at Uncle Bill's Hobbies in Calgary on June the 23rd, 2001 for $18.99. That's quite a long time ago. Uncle Bill's Hobbies of course is no longer around. Again, lost to time. Here we get a nice little package which is great. I love the Japanese kits for this because they divide out parts from other parts. Here you can see we've got pieces molded in black as well as parts molded in white and chrome. And if you're careful to take this up, you can also see we get our electric motor parts in here, which is always fun. Here's our Skyhawk body. Now one thing about this is you can build it without the opening hood or trunk, or you can score through and actually have it open. Again, you can see underneath the score marks. We've got tinted glass in here, as well as some gray plastic components. There's our engine, all as one big piece, but keep in mind you've got steering suspension and an electric motor in the back. And then we have these nice squishy slot car style tires, which are always great. And then if you look in here, you can also see the other cars in the collection. If you can find them all and track them down. And again, very cool stuff. Our instruction sheet is a one page folding instruction sheet, as you can see. So this will make it a nice and easy for the review. Again, all of this is written in Japanese, but we can take a look at it panel by panel and figure it out from the drawings. So according to the instructions, we start with our motor assembly, and this is an FA-130 motor, basically a uh, 1.5 volt, I do believe. And it shows this gear going on, which of course you take the motor and you tap it with your hammer. <laughs> and hope you don't bust anything. But no, seriously, you want to use some gentle pressure basically to push this in. You don't need to hammer off the back casing of the electric motor. And then you've got your wires which will attach to these little tabs off the side. And it all clicks into a little harness down below. Our next two panels show all the metal pieces you put into the chassis just to get that electric motor to work. So here you have your battery tabs for the batteries that go in and they tell you to crimp them over. And then you've got your steering and suspension going in with the electric motor popping into place along the rear wheels and all the other nice little clips and sliding switches which go to assemble the chassis for that electric motor. Our next two panels show our posable wheels going into place. Here we have a 
axle, our spindles, the wheel itself, the tire, and the front of the wheel, which of course would be our hubcap, all going into place. You want to use that hammer again, dun dun dun, <laughs> to put the wheels together, being very careful not to break them. Uh, toward the back we have the long and the short of it. Uh, actually, that would be right and left hand side, which is kind of hard to know here because this is Japanese, which is right and left, which is a little unfortunate. So you're just going to have to be careful. Now here it says do not cement, but this has a rack and pinion style steering to it, which of course you pop in, there's a little tab in here, which we'll see. And then that way you can steer the wheels. Oh, I guess the longer one would go on to either the right or left hand side, just so that the wheels swing in with the proper camber. Our next two panels show how to mount the motor into the back using the axle with the large gear on it. And again, you put your wheels together and you use the hammer. It's hammer time! <laughs> just to put them all together. Again, being careful that not to like punch axles through or get wheels crooked as you're doing this. And then in this panel, we show the batteries going in place with the battery cover over the top. And then our switch, you should be able to switch it on and off to get those wheels spinning. Now this part of the car is actually optional. However, what you can do to get your hood and trunk lid open is to go along those score lines that are under the car with a knife. And then you want to tape the parts into place. And then you turn the car over and you can put in your glass and your hinges as well as your rear view mirror. There's the hinges for your hood. Everything should all glue together and go in quite nicely so that you will have an operational hood and trunk lid. This panel shows how the hinges are supposed to interact with the trunk lid and the hood. Here we have our bumper going together with our license plate as well as our engine bay dropping into place. Here we have our interior which is molded as a half pan interior and that of course is because this is sitting on top of the batteries. You do have a center console with levers going in as well as a gear shift, a dashboard and a half steering wheel with a column so it's not too bad. And then we have all our hinges and rods going into the back just as support pieces for that trunk lid. Finally we have our rear bumpers gluing in place as well as our headlights and all the other details which finish off our model car kit. There's our interior dropping in as well. We also have a nice paint call out. Unfortunately it is in Japanese so if you want to build this car and you don't speak Japanese you're gonna to have to do a lot of research and photos using Google search. Next we have our Buick Skyhawk body which is not actually that bad. There are some interesting little pins on here which I do believe have to be sanded off. I can't quite understand why they'd be on there. Anyway, you can see our trunk lid here is actually cut down a little and we've got our hood. The hood and trunk lid fit very nicely on here but once you score them from underneath to open them up you might notice quite a bit of gaps going on. It's hard to say. Underneath, not too bad. A little bit of a separation line going in through there. One thing is it does look nice from the side but there are a lot of sink marks on here which are up on the tops of the headlights and a nice line right across here just millimeters above that Buick script. But again overall I mean it's not too bad. You could use this body as a 125th scale slot car if you really wanted to. Would not be too hard and the interior is already sort of set up that way for use in like a Carrera body where you again got a digital chip sitting underneath. But overall I mean the detail on this isn't bad considering that the subject matter is a Buick Skyhawk. Where else would you find a model kit of this other than this company? Here's all the black plastic components that make up our chassis and steering wheels. Now one thing I want to say is that I've noted that the Japanese model kits basically come from two schools of thought. The first one being like Tamiya, Tamiya type kits where you have high detail and uh, multiple millions of components. And the other philosophy is to build these like a toy. And unfortunately, if you are into the high detail type kits, this model car is basically built like an electric toy. However, if you're just into building models for fun and 
maybe you like the toy like application this kit is perfect for you because you do get the electric motor you're able to pose the wheels turn it off and on at a whim and drive it in circles all over your living room floor so it is quite a nice thing to get a junior model builder working on or just if you like to collect this and like i did say you can also adapt this easily onto a slot car body because it's set up for it with the uh, half height interior and all the rest Overall, this is a strong, durable plastic. So again, very nice. There's a switch in the back. Here's our cover plate, and you can see there's some nice detail on it. Not accurate for Buick in any way, shape, or form, but it will work perfectly as what it was designed for. A car with posable wheels with an electric motor you can clip into the back and have fun with. And then here's our wheel backs, and interesting that they all have the same height except for the one that's short. And like I was saying, that it, of course is for your caster and camber. When you steer the wheels, one is going to turn a little more than the other, which is natural for the way suspension systems and steering systems operate. Our next parts tree is, of course, the gray plastic components. And as you can see here, there is our interior and our dashboard and all these struts. These are for the operating trunk and hood. Then we've got our engine bay, all complete. You just uh, need to add some paint, console, steering wheel, and all the rest. So I'm gonna bring this up to the camera. Let's take a look in under the hood. As you can see, everything is there. It does look nice. Easy to paint up that V6, but again, it's all paint detailing work. So if you're really good at it, this will shine. Then we've got our seats, and as you can see, very basic. There you go underneath, mold marks underneath. Again, very nicely done. There isn't some big sinkhole in your engine bay, which would be awful. Our dashboard looks quite good for the Buick Skyhawk. Nice detail work in there with the instrument panel and cluster. There are no instruments on there. They're just flat holes. But again, like I say, if, this, if what you want is a toy car with posable wheels and electric motor, this thing is well, well more than detailed. Here's our glass for the model car. And again, very much like a 60s American style, except you get the side windows in place and the rear. These, of course, are molded in a smoke style plastic, so you get a bit of a tinted window effect. Here we have our chrome parts tree, which is very nicely done. Very sweet little parts tree. You can see the nice, highly detailed wheels there. Looks great. Uh, it's got Skyhawk license plates for a factory showroom look, I guess. There's our rear end. Again, you're, like, you're going to have to get some testers turn signal red to paint in there just to make it look right. There's our headlights down here. And again, bumpers and whatnot. All the mold buttons are on the back. Again, making this a very nice and quick, easy build, which is gonna look very precise and clean. Now you're gonna have to forgive me a little bit in this unboxing, because I don't really like to show things through a plastic bag. But in this case, I'm gonna do exactly that because I don't wanna lose all these little parts. So here we have the black wire, which will go onto your engine, the metal axle for the rear axle, with which has the big gear, and then our little soft small gear is in place for the motor and all our little battery bits and whatnot. And there is only one small sad problem. I don't actually have the electric motor in here, but one of those CAN motors designed for a 1.5 volt battery will do the job. Now for a model car that's pretty basic in design, these tires make up for it. These are Goodyear Rally GTs, and I know a lot of the model cars that I reviewed from AMT have Rally GTs in them, but these tires are far superior to the AMT style tires. I mean, the tread on here looks really nice. It's low, it's proper into the tire as it should be. The Goodyear lettering and Rally GT are not too tall like they are on the AMT tires. These ones are squishy, so you can conform them onto the wheel nicely and they don't have any flash or any central web to remove. So again, these tires are the star of the kit. And that completes our look at the 1975 Nostalgic Heroes Buick Skylark by Doyusha. 
And if you've built this model car in the past, we want to see your pictures of it over on our Facebook page, and I'll leave the link for that in the description below. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great review of the 1975 Buick Skyhawk by Nostalgic Heroes. Tune in next week when we open up the lid on another great model kit. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Hit that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. And until next time, happy model building!